So this video is revision of the particle model, which is something that we use in physics to explain the world around us. Now the first thing we're going to consider is something called density. Now density is basically a measure of how much stuff there is in a given volume. So perhaps we have uh, two things which have the same volume. Uh, so I'm just going to take this off. What we have is the same volume uh, of material here, but this one here is a lot heavier, it's got a bigger mass. And that means that there's effectively more stuff in the same space. Now the way that we work out density, uh, we use the symbol rho, so R H O. Uh, this is a Greek letter that we use to represent density, and it's equal to the mass divided by the volume. Now because we always measure mass in kilograms, and we tend to measure volume in cubic meters, this then gives our density in kilograms per cubic meter. Although sometimes if we were to measure our mass in grams or volume in cubic centimeters, we could also, uh, depending what we're measuring our quantities in, we could maybe look at the grams per cubic centimeter. Now this particle model allows us to look at solids, liquids and gases. And if we think about the behavior of the individual particles or molecules, this explains why certain things have certain properties. So I'm just going to consider solids, liquids and gases. So in a solid, we have this close packed regular arrangement of particles. Now they're still uh, jiggling around, they're still vibrating, but they're not really able to move around that uh, material. So that's why a solid is what it is. A liquid, on the other hand, um, the, the, the particles are still really densely packed together, probably a similar density to in a solid, but here they're able to move past each other. And what we have is this random motion of all the particles in a liquid. In a gas, on the other hand, the particles are really spread quite a long way away. They're moving quickly in all random directions. And because of this, we can do things like we can compress a gas or, or whatever. So let's think about how we go from one state to another. Now, if you have a solid and you heat it up, it turns into a liquid. So that's when it's melting. The liquid then might boil and turn into a gas. But if we have something which is evaporating, this is where something turns from a liquid to a gas below its boiling temperature. This is the reason uh, that things like puddles do dry up, even though it never gets to above 100 degrees. That water still turns into the water vapour. Going the other way, we have gas that condenses to a liquid, and then the liquid freezes to a solid. But what we also have sometimes is a solid that turns directly into a gas. You might have seen this with some carbon dioxide pellets. And this is what we call subliming. And the key thing to remember is when we move from one state to another, there's no chemical reactions happening. It's just a physical change, which means it can be reversed and they can go back to the state they were in before. Now, I said that all of these particles may be moving around and so on. And what we can then consider is something's internal energy. Now, internal energy is defined as the total kinetic and potential energies of all the particles that make up that system. So this is a combination of their potential energy, which is due to the arrangement of the particles, as well as how quickly they're vibrating and moving around. Now, if we were to look at the internal energy, so this is what this E stands for here, and we look at how that compares to the temperature, what we find is that as you increase the internal energy, the temperature also increases until we get to this point where we have a change of state. And what we find is that when something changes state, so maybe it's, in this case, the temperature is increasing, so it might be melting, it might be boiling, we have that happening at a constant temperature. Now, what we can think about are the amount, or is the amount of energy that uh, it needs to go from one temperature to another. And what we have here, when we have these regions here, we have something which is maybe a gas, a liquid or a solid. If we want to look at the amount of energy that it takes to heat something up, we can then look at something called the specific heat capacity. So the link between the internal energy and the temperature is that the change in internal energy is equal to mc delta theta, where what we have is our change in energy in joules, we've got our change in temperature, that's all the delta means, a change in, in degrees Celsius, we have our mass in kilograms, and this thing here, C, is our specific heat capacity, and that's measured in joules per kilogram per degree. But what happens when something is changing state? Here, the temperature doesn't change, and there we need to think about something called the specific latent heat.
And this is then defined as the amount of energy required to change the state of one kilogram of the substance with no change in temperature. So this is where we're looking at this region on the graph, or this one up here. And the equation that we can use for this is that E is equal to ML. Once again, we measure our energy in joules, our mass in kilograms, and that means the units for this latent heat, the specific latent heat, are equal to the amount of joules per kilogram. Now imagine this is a container that has some gas molecules in it, and what these are doing is these are moving in all directions at a range of different speeds. So that's the kind of random motion that we get in a gas. Now provided we kept it at a constant volume and then we increase the temperature, as you increase the temperature we're going to give these things more kinetic energy remembering that the internal energy is related to the kinetic and potential energies of these uh, particles in here. Now what that means is that if you were to increase the temperature, then what would happen is that these things would have uh, an increased store of kinetic energy, and that means that they'd be moving quicker. Uh, so their velocity or their speed also increases. And that means when they hit the side of the container, they'd be hitting it with a greater force because they're moving quicker. And what that means then is that the pressure of this gas would increase. So you have some gas, it's at a constant volume, and you heat it up, and the pressure then increases. But if we had the same amount of gas, and we put it into a larger container, what we're doing there is we are increasing the volume. So let's take this gas and put it in here. Now these are still going to be moving around, but they're going to be hitting the edge of the container less frequently. And also, the size of the area of that uh, outside of the container is going to increase as well. Now what this means is that there's going to be less collisions per second, and that means that the force that they exert on the side is going to be not only smaller, but it means the pressure is going to decrease as well. So when you increase the volume for that same amount of gas at a constant temperature, it means that the pressure goes down. What we can actually say is that the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume, or we could write that as pressure times the volume is equal to a constant amount. And that's really important because it means that if you knew the pressure and the volume of some gas at the beginning, and you knew the pressure or the volume at the end after you've maybe increased or decreased the volume, we can then work out the new pressure or volume. And effectively what we can say is that the pressure times the volume before is going to be equal to the pressure times the volume afterwards. And this is provided it happens at a constant temperature. And finally, if you have this gas and you do some work on it, perhaps you compress something, so you're applying a force over a distance, what happens is you then increase the internal energy, because you might be giving these things more kinetic energy, and if you give these things more kinetic energy or more potential energy, then what we're doing is we are increasing the internal energy of the particles in that system. So that is just a very quick summary of the AQA particle model just a little bit of revision, but if you'd like to find out more information, please have a look at my website, gcsephysicsonline.com.